Hi everyone, welcome to this month's My Edinburgh Experience video. In these videos, I'm taking you around my favourite parts of the city and at the same time using real English so that you can learn some fantastic expressions. Today, we're going to be talking about Edinburgh's new town. So let's go! September 1751 in the Old Town, a tragedy happened when an entire building collapsed on the Royal Mile. This wasn't unusual in Edinburgh's Old Town by any means because the, the structures were not of the best quality. However, what was unusual this time was that it was a house uh, built on one of the most prestigious streets and lived in by some of the rich people of the neighbourhood. This was the catalyst which really pushed forward the urban change and regeneration of Edinburgh, which was long needed. So Edinburgh at this point was really a medieval provincial town. It had grown up um, out from the castle on what was called a herringbone plan. Uh, it was a very, very narrow space built around city walls. And if you wanted to trade and, and sell or work in the capital, uh, you had to be living within those castle walls. What that meant was that in terms of building, you could only go upwards. And it resulted in a city made up of these very narrow, tall tenement buildings. So these narrow tenements caused various problems. First of all, it was incredibly unhygienic. It was really easy for disease to spread. Second of all, uh, it was really common for fires to break out as well because the houses were so close together. In terms of hygiene, like I mentioned earlier, there wasn't any. The Nor Loch was an artificial loch that had been created as protection for the castle against invaders. But over time, it just turned into the city's dump. There you could find uh, various dead bodies from people that had either been murdered or executed. If you had rubbish that needed thrown away, it got put, got put in there. And it was generally a bit of a cesspit for the entire city. On top of that, the rich didn't really like having to live cheek by jowl with the poor. And I think they were quite ready to have a slightly nicer place to live. So it was decided that there would be a competition to find out who would design Edinburgh's new town. Urban renewal took quite a long time in Edinburgh. This was a lot to do with the city council that was made up of 25 men. These were all from various trades. Uh, they were pretty much uh, divided on sectarian issues um, and pretty useless as well at getting anything done. Probably not helped by the fact that most of their meetings were in pubs. Edinburgh needed a hero to put this change through and they found that in a man called George Drummond. George Drummond was Edinburgh's Lord Provost, a real self-made man. He wasn't born into wealth. He'd gone for an education at the Edinburgh High School and quickly advanced uh, through local government. He was the man who'd had the vision of what Edinburgh could become and had per helped purchase quite a lot of land to the north of the city. 40 years after he made this initial purchase, it was finally possible to run a competition to find an architect to design the new look of Edinburgh's new town. Another thing that was quite unique about Edinburgh's new town was that it wasn't done through royal patronage. The king and the crown in general had long disappeared down to London, which was a full 10 days travel by stagecoach. So if Edinburgh wanted to make a change, it would need to fund it itself. And this was also uh, why there was quite a modern way to find an architect. The, um, the contract for the new town was put out to tender and the winner of it was a completely unknown architect by the name of James Craig. One of the reasons that James Craig's plan was chosen was because it really celebrated the union between Scotland and England. This was quite recently after the Battle of Culloden and the final Jacobite rebellion. By choosing James Craig's plan, um, Edinburgh really wanted to show that Scotland was on the side of the Hanoverian royal family. The street names on James Craig's design are just as important as the design itself. The main street in the middle is called George Street, which was after King George. You'll then find Princess Street and Queen Street. You have Frederick Street, which was the name of the Crown Prince. 
you have Hanover Street, the name of the royal family, the Hanoverians, and then you've got Castle Street, a reference to the view of the castle, but also a connection with the crown. The streets in the middle and the squares at the end were to represent the union between Scotland and Edinburgh. You had Rose Street, and the rose is the national flower of England, and Thistle Street, and the thistle is the national flower of Scotland. In the main squares, you have St Andrew's Square, and that's the patron saint of Scotland. And initially, the square at the other end, where I am now, was going to be called George, uh, George Square, after St George the patron saint of England. This is actually now called Charlotte Square, uh, and Charlotte was the name of the Queen. I imagine she wasn't happy that George and Frederick had their own uh, you know, streets and she wanted something for herself as well. Whether he was doing it on purpose or not, James Craig was creating a city of contrasts. Even the stone that was used was different. We had a dark granite stone that was used in the old town compared to the light, white, modern sandstone of the new town. You had the open spaces and wide streets and low buildings compared to the really narrow, winding, medieval design of the old town. This new design was also going to embody a new way of thinking because it became the home of the Scottish Enlightenment. The Scottish Enlightenment had started in the old town, but it was soon the home of some of the most important members of it. One of the first to move from the old town to the new town was the philosopher David Hume. His street lives on in memory being called St. David Street, which was a nod to the fact that he was a famous, famous atheist. Like pretty much every single planning decision taken by a council, this one was also considered controversial. A lot of people felt that the uniform design of the buildings was really boring compared to the var variety that you could find in the old town. So in order to address this, the council finally commissioned um, one of the most famous architects of his day, Robert Adam, to design some elevations for Charlotte Square. What the elevations meant was that he would do something to change the design of the current buildings. And this has become one of the most famous examples of Georgian architecture and best preserved ones in the world. Behind me, you can see the result of those elevations. The genius of Robert Adam was that he made various buildings look like one huge palace. And it really went back to some of the um, ideas of the Enlightenment, the basic ideas of the Enlightenment, which consisted of celebrating um, ancient Rome and ancient Greece. This final flourish of the new town really put Scotland on the map. Within about 50 years, it had changed from a provincial backwater to one of the most incredible and celebrated cities in Europe. And it really still is. The legacy of the new town lives on. For me though, one of the kind of strange things about Edinburgh's new town is the fact that even though it was built in celebration of the defeat of the kind of Highland culture or the romantic Highlander at Culloden, and actually some of the money that was used to build it came from seized assets from these Jacobites. When we think of Scotland, the image that we have is the romantic Highlander, rather than the kind of bed of enlightenment thinking, modern philosophy, invention that was the Scottish Enlightenment. It's an interesting thing to consider why that's the image that most of us have of Scotland, rather than Edinburgh's beautiful, beautiful new town. So if you do come to visit, I recommend taking some time to walk around this beautiful part of the city. unusual in Edinburgh's old town by any means. On top of that, the rich didn't really like having to live cheek by jowl with the poor. I imagine she wasn't happy that George and Frederick had their own uh, you know, streets and she wanted something for herself as well. was doing on purpose or not, James Craig was creating a city of contrast. For me though, one of the kind of strange 
strange things about Edinburgh's new town. Defeat of the kind of Highland culture rather than the kind of bed of enlightenment thinking. <laughs> Thanks so much for taking the time to watch our video today. Please remember to subscribe so that you don't miss a video and we'll see you soon. Bye.